Okay, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, And the Word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, the Holy Mother of God. Let us pray, pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts. So we to whom the incarnation of Christ, thy Son, was made known by the message of an angel may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us, and may the souls of the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. So you're all very welcome uh, to this, this workshop today, and uh, I'll introduce you today to Kathleen Duffy, uh, on my left here, and uh, she is, uh, I, I suppose, uh, what would sum her up very much into things spiritual, a spiritual director in every sense of the word, also a retreat director and a coordinator of retreats and of children's liturgies. And uh, she organizes, I think for the past 11 years, has been organizing the family liturgies in Ballina. And uh, she, uh, she also organizes retreat days and guided prayer and meditation and individual spiritual direction as well. And she's also a member of Towards Peace, which is spiritual support for survivors of abuse by Catholic Church personnel here in Ireland. So as you can see, she has a very impressive uh, CV. So we look forward very much to hearing uh, from you, Kathleen. So, over to you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, you're all welcome, and it's great to see so many faces, and especially to see so many faces of people that I know, family members and um, friends. It's great to see you. Now, on your chairs, I left a little example of children's liturgy, which is uh, the, the children's angelus. So I, I know we've just prayed the Angelus, but I wonder could we just do this as, an, as a way into the workshop. And I'm just going to ask that this side over here on my left would be the red people, and on this side the, the black. Is that okay? So this is, this is an example of, of how a, a young mother or father or any person who would be looking after small children could introduce children into prayer at a very early age. And it's the story of the incarnation. It's as simple as that. So we'll start with the, the reds, okay? The angel. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Well, my father used to say about my mother, because she used to talk a lot, he, he used to say, poor Mary, whenever she opens her mouth, she let it say what it likes. Now, I'm a little bit like that when it comes to the children's masses and children's liturgies because I believe so much in, in this as a form of hope, as a way of hope for our church. Um, so uh, if I talk a little bit too much, forgive me. So here's the, the agenda. I'll be telling you a little bit about myself in a few minutes um, and particularly with regard to this, the title of this workshop. Then I'll say something about children's liturgies and why they are important, how we can promote and encourage and take ownership of them. 
then I'll say something about how we do things in Balana, which is, which is one way of promoting children into their uh, appreciation of the faith, but it's not the only way. There are many different ways. And then I'll say something about the, 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 the reason behind all of this. So then, if we have time, we'll have a few questions, and uh, which will bring us to one o'clock. So, um, so I, I was born in, in London. Um, I was born in London. My, my father is from Bohola, which is that way, I think. And my mother is from Charlestown, which is kind of that way, I think. And Knock was always a very, very special place. And I remember at one time cycling here from Charlestown. Um, and so Knock has always been dear to my heart. So I've been here. I've lived in Ballina for the last 47 years. Uh, my husband is from Balahadreen. His name is James Duffy. So he's, he's down the back there keeping his head down. So, um, yeah. Um, so the title of, of, anyway, just to say that I wouldn't be here unless I absolutely know that this is one very, very positive way that we can promote of the faith in, uh, in our children. And we, the children are, belong to all of us. They're all of our children. All of these children, we're responsible for them. Um, and we have to help them to be involved, which is the key to faith and the practice of faith, helping children to be involved, taking ownership. So we know that the, the, the children are the future of the church. And, and if we turn them away, either intentionally or unintentionally, then, then we're doing them a great disservice and a disservice to our church. We're all familiar with uh, the, the words on the screen, uh, let the children come to me and don't stop them. We're familiar with those words. Well, in the chapter previous to this, uh, Jesus said, unless you change and become like children, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. We, we often miss that. We have to change to become more like children. Not easy. And he said that. He said that not to the children, not to, to the parents. He said that to his disciples, to the chosen ones, those who probably thought they were better than others. Jesus says, you've got to change and become like these little ones. So he's asking us as well today to let go of the sophistication and simply come to him. It's as simple as that but it's also a challenge. And the challenge is for us to, let, to acknowledge ourselves as we are with our notions of ourselves and our pious um, regard for ourselves and that and really just come down to the nitty gritty and admit that we know very little, like a child would do. Um, and children, as we know, have that freedom and openness. Uh, there's something uh, life-giving about a small child. So, um, I'll say something about that afterwards. So, we'd all agree that the children are an investment in our future. Would we, would we all agree with that, that children are the future? Because w chances are, one of my sons calls it ten toes up. He says, when we're ten toes up, ma, in 50 years' time, you know, who's going to carry on the faith? You know, who's going to be there? Who's going to, do, who's going to do it? So somehow we have to help these children to become involved in what matters to us. And, and we, we get hung up. We, we're so often afraid of stepping out of our comfort zones in this, in this, in this regard. Um, and we all agree that it's a good idea to make good investments. So we need to find ways to adapt and re-energize our liturgies so that our ch churches, our places of worship, are indeed places where children will feel comfortable in and, dare I say, even happy in. Can you imagine? Smile. I remember when I was a child at Mass, this is in Lon London, and um, we were at Mass there. I was there with my parents and my brothers, and uh, on the way out, I saw, <laughs> I saw my teacher, and she smiled at me. I nearly died. She smiled. In the church, I thought, how, 
How could anyone be smiling in the church? It didn't add up to me. You know, this is good news that we're celebrating. Good news, not bad news. So yes, we do need solemnity, and we do need well-prepared and well-planned liturgies. But they must be creative, in my opinion, they need to be creative and at the service of God's people. That's why we're here, to be at the service of God's people. Jesus is present at Mass. Jesus is present in our liturgies as we gather in his name. And Jesus was definitely not somebody who was full of doom and gloom, nor was he somebody who made people feel anything other than good and cheerful, for the most part. He didn't do that with the Pharisees now. He hadn't much time for them fellas. They were the hypocrites. He did not have time for that. So Jesus challenges us to live simply, but in that simplicity is his promise of peace. Letting go, letting go. It's a lifelong journey. It's not going to happen overnight. So involving children is risky business. They say you should never work with children or animals. And anyway, I don't work with animals, but certainly children, I know it's risky business. Um, but if we don't take a risk, if we don't bother to help them to feel and experience the life-giving nature of Eucharist, then we fail them. Um, so in Balana, we've been celebrating children's masses every week for the last 11 years. I could get going now. It has to be experienced to be believed what happens. I know there are some sisters here who have been to our children's mass and they might like to say something themselves about it. But um, it has had a sort of a snowball effect on, on the parish and on the community. It started out quite simply, and it has been running every single Sunday for the last 11 years, children's mass, except for the summer months, July and August. They're the only times. Now, we could never have envisaged at the time how well this mass was received. We could never have. It was, it was as if it was something that was waiting to happen. A car park that was once empty for the 10 o'clock mass every Sunday in St. Patrick's in Ballina is now packed. And somebody said to me just a few weeks ago, was there some special mass on here today, Kathleen, in the, in the church? And I said, no, nothing, just the usual. God, I couldn't get parked at all, couldn't get the car in. That's, and it's a big car park. It's, you know, so that's what has been happening. Now, just to say, Firstly, that the first and foremost thing about this, that, that apart from celebrating the Eucharist, the children do everything. I don't know if you can actually imagine that, but they do a welcome, they do the bidding prayers, they do the readings, they do the collection, they sing. Um, everything that's to be done is done by the children, everything practical. We have a slideshow, which I, I'll, sh I'll show you um, after a while. Um, we have a trad group as well, a beautiful group who play traditional music when the children's choir are not, um, are not on. We have a meet and greet group, little, little ones, who hand out the bulletins at the start of Mass. And <laughs> last year there was, there was a little lad, his name is William, and he's, he's very funny, and he said... Um, he was watching these, these people coming in, and there was an older couple coming in. He was giving out bulletins, and he realized he was coming to the end of his pile of bulletins. And he looked at them, and he said, Are ye a couple? Well, one will do ye so. And I just... <laughs> and he's about this high, you know. That's what I mean about the freedom and the spontaneity of children, that they can do this and just um, really warm our hearts. Um, it has become a life-giving experience for people who have, who have experienced it. Um, we have moved on to, um, over the last number of years, have a, a, we have Mrs. Doyle's tea shop, 
we call it Mrs. Doyle's, you know, go on, go on, go on, come and have a cup of tea. So we call it Mrs. Doyle's. So we have a cup of tea after Mass every Sunday. And that, again, has been a wonderful way of forming community. Ordinary people from every walk of life come and sit and may or may not have a cup of tea. Um, there are no exclusions. Children from all backgrounds are encouraged to take part. And their confidence as they stand, I'm more nervous standing here in front of this thing than those children, they go up and they move the microphone up and down at the ambo. And we're talking about five, six years of age. They're fabulous. The spin-off, another spin-off has been that the teenagers who were little when we began 11 years ago are now part of a youth group. So they're the ones who do the readings, the regular adult Sunday readings during July and August. So they've moved on but they're still part of it. One of them actually plays the organ for the children's mass. So we have, we have children of all ages because the adults, uh, uh, the, the, the parents and the grandparents, you'll see the grandparents coming in with their grandchildren and then the parents come as well. It's, it's been just great. Um, so I'm just going to go through um, what we call the three Ps to celebrating our faith family. So any of you recognize what that is up there? What kind of a stool? There's more to it, come on. Somebody said it. Milking stool, yeah, yeah. If any one of you can remember what a milking stool was or use it, yeah. So, okay. So I call it our three Ps because if, if you didn't, if you were ever milking a cow, if you ever, uh, if you sat on a, and milking stool, and one of the legs went, you're finished, yeah? The whole lot, yeah? But you need the three, you need the three to keep steady. So the first, um, the first P is the parish. And in Ballina, we have, we, um, our bishop is John Fleming, he's extremely supportive of, of what we do, and he sometimes celebrates mass for the children. Um, so the, the parish is the priests. Now the priests, to begin with, they were, perhaps a little bit hesitant because they were unsure of working with children like anything could happen. But as time went on and the crowds were coming and they were themselves being affirmed in what they do, they realized yeah, children are actually listening to the word of God and experiencing the life-giving uh, nature of what the word of God will bring. Parents, children, grandparents, whatever. So then, so then we have the parents. Now, the parents, uh, the parents from the various schools. We have six schools in, in the in the in the parish. The, the, there are, there's a committee that has been formed uh, of the parents, and this is crucial. If we didn't have that as another part of our milking stool, it wouldn't we, we it wouldn't work. And we all know that every mammy, every daddy wants the best for their children. Isn't that it? They all want the best. Where, whatever form that is, they want the best for their child. Um, so then we have the pupils. Now the pupils, um, that's where the schools come in. And it can be a little bit difficult at times because we're talking about busy principals and teachers who have an awful lot on their plate already. And there we are trying to promote their involvement in children's liturgies every week. But we have a rota system and it seems to work. And also, do you know what? We play on the fact that there's a healthy competitiveness with the schools. So the school down the road, you know, may not be as good as our school, that kind of thing. But anyway, I don't want to bore you. But here's what we do. The, ch the, readings, the readings for each Sunday, <coughs> the readings from each Sunday of, listen to this now, the readings for each Sunday of the three years of the liturgical cycle have been adapted into child-friendly language. So every single Sunday has its own child-friendly uh, liturgy prepared. Um, and I just, just wonder, is there anybody that would, would read? Is there anyone, anyone would like to read just a passage from the, 
prophet, Isaiah, or prophet Jeremiah there for the fifth Sunday in Lent? Anybody? Could you do it? The first reading from the first Sunday in Lent, and on the screen is the child-friendly version. I randomly picked this. It wasn't, there wasn't no big uh, debate about it. Yeah, you probably should do. Sorry, I should have asked you. Now, it's the first reading. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. See, the days are coming. It is the Lord who speaks. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, and the house of Judah, but not a covenant like the one I made with their ancestors on the day I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant of mine, so I had to show them who who was the master. It is the Lord who speaks. No, this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel when those days arrive. It is the Lord who speaks. Deep within them, I will plant my law, writing it on their hearts. Then I will be their God, and they shall be my people. There will be no further need for neighbor to try to teach neighbor, or brother to say to brother, learn to know the Lord. No, they all know me, the least no less than the greatest. It is the Lord who speaks. Since I will forgive their iniquity, and never call their sin to mind. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Susan. So you can see the difference between, uh, if you were a child hearing the adult version that we're familiar with, compared to this. Child, children could understand this. It can make sense to them. Um, so the priest on duty of, for that day will receive... Uh, a script by email and that script contains the readings but also the child-friendly versions of the opening prayer of the Mass, the prayer over the gifts and the final prayer. Okay. Can you, is that okay? Can you see that? Okay. So, um, A committee meets, the the committee I spoke about earlier from the parents, meets a few times during the year, and that's the hub of, these people are incredible. These people who who meet as a committee, I wouldn't be here only for those people. They're amazing, absolutely amazing, and the the work they do is phenomenal. I mean, we we couldn't do it without, you know, without a lot of people being involved. Um, And their enthusiasm is wonderful. So... um, Moving on now. Um, so there are six schools, as I said, in the parish, and each one takes one mass per term. And that's as well as the six do this in memory masses and the six confirming our children masses, which happen in most par- parishes anyway. But they're just the uh, confirmation and the, chil- the uh, communion masses are just adapted slightly. They might be a little bit different in the welcome to suit the needs of the occasion. The readings are distributed the previous week through the schools or through one of the committee members. Uh, and we have l- lots of little ones who want to be involved. So how do you involve small children who can't read? We give them flowers usually plastic ones, but it's better than nothing. And they bring up those flowers to the altar in the entrance procession at Mass. And they're fabulous. They're wonderful. And they wave the things up the aisle on the way. And it's just lovely to see them. And they put them down at the basket at the front. And on certain occasions, they might bring up, for example, on Holy Souls Day, they they would bring photographs of their grannies and granddads or anybody from their family who had died. Um, just depends on the, ser- on the occasion. And we make fuss of all these. We use these occasions, Mother's Day, Father's Day, um, Holy Souls, um, Harvest, huge thing at Harvest. We make use of those to include as many children as possible. Now, from what I'm saying here, it sounds perfect. Everything is lovely. But, but 
don't be fooled. Lots of mistakes, lots of things happen. Where there are children and where there are just human beings, we make mistakes. Things go wrong, but as, as I just say to the kids, even if it's all wrong, it's all right. Simple as that. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to play you a little song. Is that all right? Does anyone remember Val Dunigan? Yeah. yeah? You're old enough to remember, so am I. So, okay, this is... No dancing, please. Children are people who live in a land made of raindrops and puddles and pebbles and streams, solemnly watching a twig as it sails on a clear crystal pool to an island of dreams. There go a pair who have just built a city of mud, and it's real. They know that mud doesn't look very pretty But ooh, how it feels This little boy greets the snow with a smile That little girl has discovered an isle Made up of pillows One little fellow is friends with the wind in the willows all of them children and all are mysterious people I can remember when I was a boy that my bed was a ship that I sailed through the night and I remember the world as a place that was eager and loving and shiny and bright Where is the boy who was friends with a rainbow And once rode upon Where is that shy and mysterious person Oh, where have I gone? I can remember I once said my prayers But now I stand by while my children say theirs Watching them kneeling And I could cry that one day they'll forget All that they're feeling Oh, what a shame that our children should grow into people. Does that bring back memories? Yeah. Lovely. Um, so I'm just going to very quickly show you a slideshow presentation. I'm, it's, it's long, but I'm not going to delay on it. I'm just going to show it to you, run through it, you'll get a flavour of what the people in the church in Ballina see every Sunday morning. Uh, well, it, it, it's different, obviously. It's different from one, one week to the next. But this is just a flavour of it. Um, you'll, get this, you'll get the idea. Um, okay. so, while, these, while this is up on the screen, a child does the welcome. Welcome, welcomes everybody. So this is a penitential rite. Another child does this. And then we pray the Gloria together. And it's lovely. Everybody actually joins in. You know when you go to Mass and sometimes people just... But everybody joins in because they're actually looking at the words and it feels like it's praying. Uh, uh, how are we doing for time? Half past, okay. Um, so there's the first reading. Then, then the choir coming with the psalm, and there's the second reading. Again, two different children doing this. And then, Alleluia, and the gospel, whatever the gospel will be, there are uh, appropriate pictures to, um, to, to, to tie in with that. Then the priests, priest will do his homily. And the homilies are child-friendly. They don't go on forever, and they're fabulous. They, they, they interact with the children. It's wonderful. 
Um, yeah. Uh, I can't remember what, these are probably bidding prayers, or maybe these were the homily. Yeah, they're bidding prayers now. Yeah, oh no, that was homily. Then, then, then the, the creed, yeah. Again, everybody joins in. And the bidding prayers, getting the thumbs up from Pope Francis, Holy Spirit. Special needs children, yeah. Exam students, probably that was about and leaders of the country, the life-giving thing of children, prayer for the dead, and then over the last year we've included um, the, the 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 prayer for the family. God, our fathers, we are brothers, and you know the Pope's prayer for the for the family. Um, so again, everybody joins in on that. Uh, how are we doing? Off a tree. Going to be our father. Well, you can imagine you're at mass, and this is this is going on. Um, in, and then at communion for the little ones, we have yeah, cartoons because the ch the choir is singing at the time. So the, the just to keep the little ones kind of ent I don't want to say entertained, but th they've got watch they're watching the what's going on on the screen. There's Peter Rabbit. Uh, Mickey Mouse, and there's all sorts of different things that we, we don't use all of these, but. Um. <laughs> so then you come to the, the, another child goes up and does the, the reflection. Doing things the way God wants isn't always easy, as we know. We all like to think we know what's best for us, and so we want to have our own way. Um, but doing things our own way doesn't always make us happy, like when we tell lies about other people, or when we disobey our parents, or when we are unkind at school, or whatever, whenever we disrespect our world and all the creatures in it, when we show disregard for the environment, these things bring us sadness. God's plan for us is one of happiness. So when we choose to follow Jesus, we will be happy and our lives will be full of joy. So there's a message getting out there for them. So, so that's... Um, and then the, the final hymn, the, and then, do you see that one? Do you see that one? Isn't that lovely? <laughs> isn't that cooperation, isn't it, really? <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> and, then, and then the final one, yeah. Okay, that's it. So that's, that's, that's just a flavor of a slideshow. Now, just want to, I'm coming to the end now. Just want to say this, that the Holy Spirit is at work always but we need to be present to the gift of that spirit alive in us the gift of jesus who draws and invites us continually into relationship with him so i'm just going to say that again we need to be present to receive the gift of that spirit the gift of jesus who draws and invites us continually into relationship with him this is prayer. And if you think for a minute, uh, you know, we have this idea of prayer being on your knees or, or spending hours and hours. If you just think back to the, the people who witnessed the apparition here, they weren't holy joes. They weren't uh, big shots in any way at all. Um, <laughs> as Del Boy says to Rodney, au contraire, Rodney, they were ordinary, humble, simple people like us. Just ordinary, simple people. But they lived and they loved and they knew their need of God. That's the difference. They knew their need of God. And they knew their desire for God. It was deep in their hearts, as was God's desire for them. And the Gospels are full of people like them. Full of people. Humble, ordinary people that Jesus called. Um, I have a friend who did a, a guided retreat one time, and as part of her exercise, she was asked to, she was asked to um, uh, put herself. In, this is Ignatian spirituality. I'm kind of giving a bit of a plug here, but um, she was she was she was asked to put herself into the gospel scene. Um, I don't know whether it was um, Zacchaeus or one of those uh, stories in the gospel. And when she came back the next day to, to talk to her director about her experience, he'd said to her, 
Look, it's as simple as this. Zacchaeus died 2,000 years ago. All the people that you read about in that story, they're all dead. But Jesus is alive, and you're alive. That's the key. That's, that's what makes it. It's this relationship that each one of us is being called into with him. Uh, it's about taking opportunities to, to, to make things happen in our parishes, uh, in our diocese. Um, some of you will be familiar with, with Anthony de Mello. He has a story of a man who, who, who um, every Saturday he would, he would buy a, no, he, oh yeah, he would um, call out to God every Saturday night, Lord, he said, would you, would you help me win the lotto? Help me win the lotto every, every Saturday night. Eventually God got fed up and he shouted back at him, do me a favor, give me a break, buy a ticket. The man hadn't even bought a ticket and he was expecting to win the lottery. We expect things to happen for us, but we need to be present. We need to help. We need to be there to make these things happen. Um, we need to have the willingness to step outside of our comfort zones. So prayer must be the heartbeat of our liturgies and of all our church involvement. And just this is a final thing I want to say, the greatest prayer of all is the prayer of the Eucharist. That's the greatest. All roads on our faith journey lead to Eucharist and all roads lead from Eucharist. That's the heart of it. Nothing, nothing is more important than that. And therefore, and therefore, we must treasure the great gift that is priesthood. It's God's gift. And anything that's given must be treasured. Any gift should be treasured. So, um, so <laughs> Sinead, that's it. Uh, th thanks for listening. I just want to say that at the, um, at the back, on, on the table back there, there are, and I'd really appreciate if you would fill in a form at the back. It would help very much if you would fill in a form just as a feedback and leave them into the box at the back there. Um, there's some, there might be one or two um, uh, leaflets there on Manresa House in, in Dublin. It's a very useful and very good place to go on retreat. And there are so also some catalogues on Towards Peace down there as well. But please do fill the forum in before you go. And thank you for your time. You've been brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Will you take some questions then? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah.